Hello and welcome back to another interrogation breakdown video. This is the interrogation of Cameron Rogers. At the age of 22, he killed his mom Meryl and his dad Dave in November of 2016. Cameron debated with himself for almost an hour before hitting his mother with a stick and then stabbing her with a knife. He then stabbed his father in the back. Dave quickly bled out, but Meryl suffered for hours as Cameron sat in his bedroom, telling his uncles she had the flu. He put their bodies in a ditch in his backyard and tried to flee Canada. When that was unsuccessful, he called the police and reported himself. This is the interview after the confession on the 911 call. Okay, so how are you doing? Good. Good, you're okay? Yeah. All right. Do you remember my name? Uh, no. You just met me for the first time, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So my name's Teresa. Okay. I'm with the Ottawa Police, and I'm a police officer, and I work in the Major Crime Unit. All mm -hmm. right? So I met you for the very first time today, right? Mm -hmm. Just a few minutes ago, you were in your cells. I was with mm -hmm. another officer, and uh, we escorted you here, and we told you to bring your blanket because as you can tell it's a little chilly in this room, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This detective makes sure Cameron is comfortable, which is why he's allowed to bring in his blanket. Cameron has autism and it's very important for him to be comfortable to be able to open up. Um, these rooms are recorded, mm -hmm. okay? So since it's being recorded, I'm just going to indicate today's uh, date and time. It's Tuesday, November 29th and it's 6.30 in the morning, and your name is... Cameron. Cameron Rogers? Yes. With an S, right? Yes. Right, okay, my name is Teresa Kelm. I'm a police officer. And um, just before we get going, you, I, it's my duty to make sure that you understand why you're here, okay? Those are your rights, okay? Mm -hmm. You have rights when you're under arrest, and um, so I need to, I want to make sure that you understand what your rights are, okay, to be fair to you, mm -hmm. all right? So do you understand that you're under arrest right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what do you believe you're under arrest for? Killing my parents. Okay. So that's called, it's first degree murder, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, so when people are under arrest, they have rights, and it's my duty to explain them to you. So you have the right to re retain and instruct counsel. Okay, so that means you can call any lawyer you wish, all right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a lawyer, you can call uh, a legal aid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 1-800-265-0451. It's a toll-free number that will put you in contact with a legal aid duty lawyer. Now, I think that's the Ontario number. I'm sure there's a Quebec number, and we can facilitate that call. I had already so, called. All right. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to talk to a lawyer again? No. No? It's, it's all sorted out uh, okay. so far. All right. Yeah. So, um, if at any time during this interview you want to talk to a lawyer again, I want you to tell me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is there a reason why you didn't want to talk to another one again? Not really, but I, I mean, I, I already talked to one. I, I, can't, I, I don't want to, like... You know, talk to another one. I, I don't see why I'd have to talk to two. Okay. I just want you to make sure that you, you understand that if you want to, because the charges you're facing are very serious, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that you understand that if you want to speak to a lawyer, that you can. Mm -hmm. Okay? The other thing I want to explain to you, and I've already explained this to you, is that the room's being recorded, right? Mm -hmm. And um, um, anything, you don't have to say anything to me. You don't have to answer any of my questions, but anything that you say to me, it's being recorded, and that can be used in court mm -hmm. as evidence against you. Do you understand mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't have to say anything to me, but if you do, we can use that in evidence against you at a trial. Do you right. understand that? Yes. Okay. The other thing is, um, how have you been treated so far by the officers here? Well, they're not mean. And they're okay. not nice. I mean, they're just neutral. <laughs> okay. All right. And what do you mean by neutral? Like what? Well, I mean, well, well, I mean, they're not nice and they're not mean. I mean, okay. like they're just they're just fine. They're just fine. Yeah. Okay. So it would be nice to have some toilet paper. 
Oh, there's no toilet paper in there? No. I, uh, but that's 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 probably okay. not for him. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the rules are yeah. here because I'm not from Montreal. Mm -hmm. I'm from Ottawa. Mm -hmm. I can certainly ask them, but I can't yeah, make you any promises whether or not we can get it because I'm just kind of like a visitor right I know. now. I know. got that? Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to um, verify how you'd been treated by the officers. Did anybody make any promises? Like in terms of, and by promise I mean that uh, telling you that if you... Uh, say something to the police, we're going to give you a reward or we're no. going to give you a deal. No? Okay. No. I just want to make sure because police officers aren't allowed to do that, oh, all right? Yeah. So remember when I came in here, I said I want to make sure that you understand your rights. I want to make sure that you've been treated fairly, and that's important to me. Okay? So nobody's made any promises. Has anybody threatened you that you better say something to no. the police, otherwise we're going to do this to you or no. that? No. Okay. So that's important to me too, so I just wanted to make sure if anybody had that that shouldn't influence you in talking to me today. Okay? Now there's some water there. Do you get, do you get thirsty when you talk? No. I do. So I'm going to have some. If you want some, you just mm -hmm. uh, you help yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. You've eaten. They gave you some food? Yes. The detective makes sure that Cameron understands his rights, and this is very important because she doesn't want this to be a cause for a mistrial in case his defense was to say he had autism and did not understand what was happening. She also makes sure he's being treated correctly at the jail. Okay, so, um, Cameron, how old are you? I'm 22. You're 22, oh, yeah. okay. And what have, are you in school? Or I, I, I was in school. Okay, what were you studying? Uh, electromechanical engineering technology, no, uh, electromechanical engineering robotics technician. Wow. And how long have you been studying that? Um, I was in that for the first year this year, but I came out of another one from the, like for the past two years I was in, uh, engi uh, um, I was in mechanical engineering technol technology, but then I changed. Okay. For this year into the first one I mentioned. Good, good. And what what are, were your plans? What did you want to do with that degree? I didn't want that degree. Oh, you didn't? No. So why were you taking it? Because my parents told told me to take it. Oh, okay. And um, why were they so keen on you taking that? Mm -hmm. uh, um, half of the problem was probably uh, because I didn't say anything else like I didn't like I mean I, I didn't say another plan for okay. the, the you know like I think does that okay make sense? so you didn't have a plan so therefore they gave you a plan yeah. it's funny you say that because when I was in schooling that's exactly what happened to me I didn't have a plan and my parents made me take these courses that I I I personally I didn't enjoy were you enjoying your schooling no that must have been hard. Yes. Yeah, okay. The detective asked Cameron what's been going on in his life to try and connect with him. Cameron states that he was taking a degree he didn't want to take because his parents told him to. The detective says that she was also forced by her parents to take classes she didn't want to take. She's trying to build a bond between them here and some trust, so that way Cameron will open up to her. What year were you in? Um... So for the first two years, I was in second year, and okay. then for this past year, I was in first year. Okay, all right. And where were you studying? Algonquin. At Algonquin? Okay. And um, were you taking any other courses anywhere else? No, no. Other than schooling, what were you doing? Are you tired? Yeah. Am I boring no. you already? No, nothing else. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything else. Okay, all right. What did you do when you weren't in school? Um, uh, if I wasn't in class, I was studying, and if I wasn't studying, then I was at home helping around the house. Good. Good. Mostly, yeah. Yeah, okay. And um, you lived with your parents? Anybody else? No? Okay. And you have a lot of extended family? Like, my mom has... Uh, three brothers. Okay. And then they have, or some of them, I, I think a, a lot of them have a lot of other 
family on the on their their other side. Okay. So, so but okay. I, I don't know that 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 the other sides. Okay. I understand you were adopted, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how how was that? How did that go with your parents? It went well. It went well. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Now, who's the closest person to you? Would you say? Mm, my dad. Your dad? Yeah. Okay. All right. And do you have any friends or anything? I have friends at uh, at school. Okay. Um, that I know from school, and that I know from past jobs. Okay. All right. So, what's been going on in your life then? How have things been going for you? Like in what way? In what way? Like, were you happy with the way things were going, or? Uh, I I don't know if I was happy with how. I was going with school because I was doing a pro a program that I didn't like. Right. Yeah. I and, understand. And and also, um, I wasn't really being able to get a job because my parents would insist that uh, I would have to work for them. For them. Yeah. And what what do you mean by that? Like around the house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And how'd that make you feel? Not good. Not good. Yeah. So they they didn't want you to go get a job outside the house. So they just wanted you working at the house. Yeah, and okay. I wouldn't actually get money because they would just say that they'd owe me money. So I actually didn't have any money. Oh, well, that must have been hard. Yes. So how did you manage then, like, if you wanted to go out or if you wanted to do something? Uh, well, uh, if I would want to use money, they would have to approve of it. Okay. All right. What kind of work were you doing around the house? Gardening and stuff involving around the garden okay. or chores. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so how did you end up here in Montreal? What brought you? Uh, I was told by uh, my, this per the person I called on the phone, the, 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 the the, not the lawyer, but the one that's supposed to help me, that I shouldn't okay. answer okay. questions. Okay, that's and, all right. And, and I'm feeling that that answer is not one I should answer. Okay, all right. We want to kind of understand kind of where things are at with you. Um, it seems like you were dealing with a lot of stuff in your life, right? Like you seem to have had a lot of pressure going on. Um, at school there was a lot of pressure going around around the house mm -hmm. and um, we know that what happened is really weighing on you right mm -hmm. and I am glad you're agreeing with that I've been working in the homicide unit since um, 2009 and I've never seen anybody that's reported it to the police the way you did, okay? And that tells me that you're somebody with a, a conscience and, and realized what you had done and decided that you needed to um, do the right thing, all right? The detective Teresa keeps her voice low and comforting. The detective states how she's never seen anyone else call the police on themselves. And this must mean Cameron has a conscience and is trying to do the right thing. This is a key factor into getting Cameron to talk. As he states later on, he feels like he should be in trouble because he did something bad. What happened before is happened, right? We can't, we can't, you can't do anything more about it. But what you do have control over is today and tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. The detective states that what's done is done, but now Cameron has control over what he does next. This is to minimize the crime he committed and compel him to confess as many details as he can. And when you talk about how the closest person to you is your father, that tells me that there's, there's a reason why this happened, okay? And we want to understand why that happened. Okay, like, w what what set you off? I know there was a lot of pressure going on, like there was your the schooling, you know, having to do work at home, not being able to get any money. Something, something triggered you to go off. And 
you know, that's what we're trying to, to understand. You know, there's, um, it seems like something that's not you, because you've never had any dealings with the police. So it doesn't happen very often that you have someone like you that's not had any dealings with the police, and boom, here you are with the murder of your parents. Okay, we know that you've called, you called 911, mm -hmm. and you reported it yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that says a lot about you as a person that you know what to do. You 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 made a mistake. And you're saying, okay, well now I need to do something about it. So you've basically taken control of that of that situation. But it's what caused you to get there? Whose fault? Like, is it is it your parents that were pushing you and you're shaking no? Well, I'm not saying it's not my parents' fault, but I'm I'm not saying it's not my fault. I mean, right. I mean, I shouldn't have done it, which is obvious. Mm -hmm. But. Like I, I don't like I don't wanna place the blame so like I can't really say that like my parents were putting pressure but they were but I mean that's yeah. no account for you know doing the deed. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we're under pressure I've been under pressure, we've all been under pressure. And sometimes when we're under pressure, it's not us that's reacting. It's the pressure that's reacting. Right? I've done things when I'm under pressure that I'm thinking, what the heck was I thinking? It's out of character. And I'm getting the feeling, what you're, what I'm hearing from you is that you were under a lot of pressure. And that's how you chose to, to deal with it. You know, mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I respect what you're saying, is that yeah, ultimately you're the one that did the deed, but there's something that caused you to want to do that mm -hmm. yeah yes. yeah and there's something that caused you to feel that that's the solution that you needed to do to deal with the pressure I guess yeah so no that's okay I mean it makes it's it's logical to me it makes it makes sense Risa is trying to get Cameron to feel more comfortable with opening up about what he did by putting an excuse like pressure making someone act different it can give Cameron some space from the action of killing his parents and hopefully have him open up about how it went down now that it's not necessarily him he's having to confess about, but that person who is under pressure. So other than um, your parents putting pressure on you with school and not wanting you to work and wanting you to work around the house, what else were they were they doing that was adding to this stress? I don't know. I mean, other than no money and having to do go into a program for three years that I didn't want to go into, um, I, I, I don't know, like, what else there would be. Mm -hmm. like, I can't think of anything. What else was missing, do you find, in your your life that you could attribute to? Well, I, I might have felt, or I might have thought at the time that I was lonely, but then mm -hmm. after I killed them, I didn't really feel lonely. Well, I felt more lonely because, anyway, that's yeah. irrelevant, but I mean, mm -hmm. realized that it was the wrong choice, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, what did you feel you would accomplish by, by killing them? Nothing. Nothing, eh? Okay. And what, what caused you to, to just do this? I don't know. It was, it was like, like it was, I guess, the spur of the moment. Like it was, it just, like, I, I, it was just, I, I don't know what made me do it. It was, just like I, I I don't even know why I did it even that that I think back to it now I don't even know why I chose to do it mm -hmm. okay how did you do it it was uh, involving mul uh, one or two 
knives and, and, and a stick. And a stick, okay. And where did you kill them? In our kitchen. In your kitchen, okay. All right. And um, what was going on right before you killed them? I was chopping melon. Sorry? I was chopping, chopping mel melon. Melon? Yeah. Okay. And where were your parents in relation to you at that point? Uh, my mom was doing something else in the kitchen. Okay. And my dad was somewhere else in the house. Okay. And then what happened? Do, do I have to talk about this? I don't want to talk about this. Okay. Well, why don't we talk about something else for for a while, okay? I, I, say, I know that's, that's upsetting you. Um, why don't we talk about how did you... How did they get to the outside? Cameron hits a block when it comes to tell the detective about how he killed his parents. She appreciates it's upsetting him to talk about how he killed his parents. So she skips forward to after they're already dead to ask him questions about what he did with the bodies. This is to get him to talk about what happened after so he'll be more comfortable talking about what happened during. This is genius and keeps Cameron talking even after he hits a mental block. I, I, I put them there. You put them there. Okay. And when did you put them there? Um, after they died. Okay. I, I, I didn't want, like, I was, I, I, I didn't want, like, their, my mom's brothers to, or any friends to come and see them like that. Okay. Well, that was, that was good of you. Clearly you were concerned for them, for the family members not seeing them, eh? Okay, and how did you get them out to the back? I had to, uh, uh, well, I, I, I dragged my mom in a tarp. Okay. And then I put my dad in a suitcase okay. and then pulled him out. Okay, and how did you get him in a suitcase? Well, I sort of rolled him into it. Okay, all right. Did he, did you have to do anything to get him into the suitcase? Or? Well, it wasn't like a perfect fit. Like, I didn't, like, make him, like, fit. Okay. Like, it, it wasn't like... Okay. All right. And how long did you remain in the house after the... A week. A week? Okay. And where were they for that one week? Well, um, for a day, they were wherever they got killed. Okay. And then uh, after that, um, was spent taking them out to the backyard and then cleaning up a little bit okay. so it wasn't you know, blood all over the place. For, for sure, yeah, because you didn't want anybody, any family members mm. to see that. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. No, that's uh, uh, that's understandable. And I, and I can tell you that where they are now, I don't think you need to worry about the family members seeing them like that, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure, and that's normal, we don't want them to see that. Okay. okay? Um, now, <clears throat> When you said clean up, what room had to be cleaned up? The kitchen. The kitchen. Okay, is that the only room yeah. that had to be cleaned up? Okay. Yeah. And where's the knife? Um, I, I put the knife, uh, the two, I think it was two, two, I think it was two knives uh, um, in a plastic bag with the stick that had broken. So I put those in the plastic bag and I put it in the black box which is in the garage okay all right yeah. okay um and what did you do then for that whole week then in the house i just stayed in my room okay because uh um i like the what i was mostly going to run away mm -hmm. from ottawa okay um i was hoping to go to the U.S., but since that didn't work out, I got stuck in Montreal. Okay, gotcha. And then that's when I called. Okay. And how come you weren't able to get into the U.S.? Well, you need some kind of, like, um, like, like, a like, like, not like a ticket, but like... You, a passport? Or well, no, no, not, that's, that wasn't the problem. It's like, because, like, I to to go there to stay there you need some kind of visa i see you know and, and i didn't have that so you know, i'd have to lie and that that's just 
wouldn't work. Right, right. Okay. So, um, do you remember what day of the week this was that this happened to your parents? Sunday. It was a Sunday at about what time was that? 11. In the morning or at night? In the morning. In the morning. Okay. All right. Now, I understand there was supposed to be some birthday party or there was some dinner that they were supposed to go to? Yeah. Okay. Now, when was that? Sunday. The Sunday. Okay. And um, did somebody call you to find out where they were? Yes. Okay. Who called? Two of her brothers. Which ones? Gord and Gordon Graham, I think. Okay. All right. And what did you? Tell? I was scared, so I said that they had the flu. Okay. All right. Okay. Did anybody come over in the uh, those eight days, or a week or so? Well, we I had that we have friends from church, and they came over on the next Sunday and I said the same thing but okay. like they had the flu okay they were at the house yeah they came over to the house okay all right so where did did they ask you where the where your parents were I said that they had the flu okay but where were they with the flu I mean I know um, where they were but what did you tell them as I told them that they were um, you know Sleeping in their room, oh. like when in the, with the flu. I, I I didn't really give that. I, all I said was that they had the flu and that they were resting. And that's okay. All right. So we're just going to try to figure. How did you get to Montreal? I took the train. Oh, you took the train. Okay. The detective already asked him this question in the beginning of the interrogation, and he refused to answer it at that time, saying it was probably something his lawyer wouldn't want him to talk about. But now she has built a rapport with him, and he is more trusting, and he's in the ease of talking. So when she asks him again, he easily answers her question this time. And then how did you get from your house to, which train station did you go to? In Ottawa? Yeah, but there's two in Ottawa. There's one there's on two? There's one on Fallowfield, and there's one on Tremblay Road. Tremblay. Tremblay Road, okay. And how did you get there? I drove. You drove whose vehicle? My mom's. Your mom's? Which vehicle is that? Is it's the van. The van, okay. And um, why didn't you just drive to Montreal? Well, I have to pay for gas. Okay. And I mean, I didn't know if I, like, I didn't know. I probably could have, but I mean, if I had to pay for more gas, I wouldn't really be able to pay for more gas. Right, okay. So you then took the train to Montreal? Yeah. And when did you arrive in Montreal? Uh... At 8.30 on Monday. 8.30 in the morning or in the evening? In the morning. In the morning, okay. Yeah. And how did you pay for your train ticket? With some money. Okay, and where did you get that money? From their purse. From their purse, okay. Or, How m all right, go ahead. Or wallet. Or okay. wallet? Yeah. Okay. From your mom or from your dad's uh, wallet? I think it was from my... I think it was from both. From both? Okay. How much money were you able to get, uh, get from there? 140. 140, okay. So you took the train to Montreal, and then what did you do once you arrived in Montreal? I bought a ticket to uh, the U.S. Okay. But it didn't work. Right. Because you couldn't... Yeah, there was no visa. Okay, right. So. Okay. And what was your plan in, in going to New York? Somehow survive. Pardon? Somehow survive. Like, I didn't really have, like, a plan. You didn't have a plan, eh? No. It was just to get as far away from Ottawa as I could. Okay. All right. And then when you got turned around, the, the, you couldn't come in. You couldn't go into the States. And um, how do you end up downtown Montreal? Well, I had to get back from the border because I, I took the train. But I didn't get past the border. Okay. So I had to take a bus back from the border. Mm -hmm. um, and the bus dropped me off, I guess, at the bus station. I don't know exactly right. where it was. but I, And then from there I walked to the, this this street that was, a, uh, was, was anyway, where, where I called. Right. Um, was like a block from where I put my bags. And that was nearby where the bus station was okay all right okay and so where did you sleep 
Oh, so I you're released late. You, you have no. That's right, because we're Tuesday. That's right, because yeah. you arrived yesterday morning. Okay. All right. And what's in the bags? Just clothes. Just clothes. Okay. Clothes. Are we going to find the knife in there, or the stick, no. or anything, or no. any weapons? Well, I have my my survival kit, um, my camping survival survival kit. So there is a saw and a Swiss Army knife and a a a a um a sheath knife. Okay, all right. And um, what made you decide to call the police to call nine one one? It was well. I mean, I didn't really have anything else to do, and mm -hmm. I mean. <clears throat> I may as well, since it's, I mean, I was, I was feeling down. For sure. You know, yeah. and I was tired, which yeah. made me feel more down. Right, yeah. And I called. Right. And how did you feel after you made the call? Well, I was crying for a long time. For sure, yeah. And then I felt better, but I mm -hmm. mean, I still don't know if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's fixed because, you know, like, I mean, we're discussing... I feel like we're still trying to figure out if I did it or not, and I don't understand, like, 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 uh, like I thought confessing would mean that I would be, you know, like that would be it. Yeah. Well, you know what? We we still need to understand um, what happened. You know, we need to understand what just because somebody tells us they did something, it doesn't mean. It happens, right? So that's why when you told Montreal, there's a lot of people say things sometimes that aren't true. So that's why they needed to, you know, figure out and what to see, figure out what happened. Cameron says he thought this would be over once he confessed on the phone, and he doesn't understand why he has to tell them again. The detective explains that they needed to figure out if he actually did it because people sometimes lie and say they've done things that they haven't done and also to figure out what exactly happened. She's trying to get as much detail as possible to build the first degree murder case and show that he had motive, as he was tired of being controlled by his parents, and he thought about it beforehand. He admits to thinking about it for almost an hour leading up to when he actually committed the crime. And, um, but you know, it's stuff like this, I think you, I mean, everybody has to make their decision what's right for them, and clearly you felt this was the right decision for you. But, you know, I always use the analogy the of a, yeah, a snowball effect, right? You start this nice snowball at the top of a mountain, yes. and it comes spiraling down yeah. the hill, and mm -hmm. it's picking up debris, and at the end, by the time it gets down there, it's, it's not the same thing anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something that... Um, wouldn't have gone away. Eventually, you would have had to dealt with it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm noticing a cut on oh, your. Oh well, that was trying to to where left where, hand. Where I put my stuff, I ha I was trying to get in because it was like a rundown place, and I had to okay. get in, so it got got cut. Oh, okay. Did you sustain any injuries while, as a result of what happened to your parents? Yeah. Okay. The detective notices a scratch on his left hand and points it out. Once he explains it, she then asks if he got any injuries, and then is very careful with her wording. She says if he got any injuries during what happened to his parents. She's wording it like this because he's been very sensitive about saying that he's the one who has done it, and she's not trying to shut him down and put another mental block up. What? So I know you're cutting melons, and that was about at 11 o'clock on the Sunday morning. Yeah. What caused you to, to, to do that? Like it was something said or no. done or... No, like, it was literally just a spur of the moment. I, I don't even know. Like I, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it was took me 50 minutes of going back and forth about to do it and then not to do it. Okay, yeah. all right. What was causing you to want to do it? Why is it you're thinking you wanted to do it? I don't remember. Okay. All right. And um, was there? What were the plans that day? The plans was to um, do some studying and then go to the restaurant for the party. For the party. Okay. All right. And your mom, you said she was in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And where was your dad? 
he was somewhere else now, so I don't know exactly. Okay. Can you just explain to me how your dad, did they both, did it both happen in the kitchen? Okay. How does your dad end up in the kitchen? Well, um, when I did my mom, he came running and then I did him. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All the hard work the detective has put in earlier to build trust and keep the conversation going has led to this pivotal moment where he's finally comfortable enough to tell her how he did it. Even though he's still using distancing words from the action, like, I did her, then I did him, instead of saying kill. And, um, how long did it take? What do you mean? Like, before your mom, like, how long did you... Well, my dad didn't take very long, but my mom took a long time. And, and, and it was really hard because she was in pain and, and I wanted it to stop. <laughs> and I couldn't make it stop. And then I felt so bad because, because she was in pain. And, and I wanted her not to be in pain, but, but I couldn't stop it. Mm -hmm. And went for the whole night. And what? <laughs> she it took the whole night for her to die. Oh, How do you how do you know that it took the whole night? Well, I don't know exactly, but I mean, I went to my room and and, and she was still in pain like here, but then in the morning it was it was done. Okay, and can I ask a question? Why is it then after when you realized she was in pain? Why didn't you call nine one one? Well, I knew it was too late. The detective has a very quiet tone as he starts crying, but then as she offers him tissues and he still doesn't take it, nor does he try to wipe his face, she seems to realize he's doing it to pretend he has remorse for his actions, and then goes back to speaking in a more direct tone. In a moment, you'll see him start talking just the way he was before, without wiping his face or anything, because she's changed his train of thought. This would indicate he's faking emotion here. And what do you mean by it was too late? The wounds were too bad. Okay. Okay. And, um, so, what about your dad? How soon after did you, did you, did you kill your dad? What do you mean how soon after? Well, after you, your mom? Yeah. Yeah. He and came he, running and then running. that's, that's when it happened. Okay, what did he say when he came in? Well, he was scared for her. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, and then it was quicker okay. with him. Okay. Now, you talked about a stick. Yeah. Who did you use the stick on? I think it was both. On both? And what part of the bodies did you hit them with? I think Sorry, it was the head. The head? Okay. Yeah. Right. The stick broke. The stick broke on who? I don't remember exactly. Okay, all right. And there were two knives involved? Yeah, I and think so. Okay, where did you get the knives? The kitchen. In the kitchen? Okay. And um, which knife did you use on which person? I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. But I think I remember this. there was a smaller one that was only used on my mom. Okay, all right, okay. And, um, do you remember what your mom said to you right before? Like before all of this happened? Yeah. No. No? Okay. Was there a conversation going on no. with you and her? No? Mm. Okay. Um, have you told anybody else about this? Other than, uh, so you've told the 911 operator in yeah. Montreal, you spoke to the Montreal officers. Yeah. We've spoken. Have yeah. you talked to anybody else about it? No. Okay. Um, between the time that you've killed the, your your parents yeah. and now, have you hurt anybody else? No. No? Okay. So there's no other, you haven't killed anybody no. else and you haven't injured anybody else? No. no? Okay. Um, who were the friends that showed up on the Sunday? They were friends from church. And do you know what are their names? 
I don't want to bring them into this. I mean, if I have to, fine. But I, I don't want to bring. They're nice people. I, do I have to bring them in? What church are they from? The the Metropolitan Bible Church. Metropolitan mm -hmm. Bible. It's a. We'll probably be able to figure out mm -hmm. who they are. Um, it's up to you if you want to tell me, but we're gonna. We'll be okay. able to figure out who they are. Okay. So yeah, I may as well tell you then. Um, uh, her, uh, there's, there's a, it's a family, there's, um, oh, oh, I know this, um, um, okay, well, I know their daughter, their daughter is called Catherine, because she goes to my school, and her mom, I can't think of it. Okay, all right, well, we'll, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to figure that out. Um, and Catherine sings in the choir. Okay. If that helps. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, and, and he, yep. the man is sort of French. Okay. I think. Yeah, he's French. <coughs> okay. So you talked to me about <coughs> the area that you cleaned up. What area in the kitchen did you have to clean up? Um, sort of like in front of like the fridge like I mean like okay. I, I don't know how to explain if you don't know the house yeah okay that's all right um what did you clean it up with um uh we have like um a like steam thing for tiles oh, okay and I use that okay and where is that now um I left it in the hall. It left it in the hall? Okay. Yeah. And what other parts of the house did you have to clean up? Just that. Just that? Okay. Now, you must have had uh, blood on you. Maybe just on my arms, but then I washed it off. Okay. And where did you wash it off? I guess when I had a shower, it washed off. Okay. And how many showers are there in the house? Two. Oh, uh, three. Three? Three. Okay. And which one did you use? The one upstairs. Okay. And how many are there upstairs? One. Just the one? Okay. The detective is asking these questions so they can go to the house and take pictures using luminol to show where blood has been. This will be used in the trial later on. Um, generally, is that what's the condition of the house? Is it tidy? Is it... It's tidy. Well, I mean... I mean... I mean, to, to me, a normal house is slightly messy, but when guests come over, it's tidy. So right. I mean, you right. Know. That's right. Yeah, you're right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if I were to go into the house now, what condition is that house in? In good condition. It's in good condition. What about in terms of it being... Like, it's not guest tidy, but it's, okay. it's normal tidy. Okay. Is it possible it's a little messier than normal? Maybe my room, since like I stayed in there during that whole week that I was in the house because I didn't want to go downstairs. Okay. Um, downstairs? In the kitchen. Oh, in the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, are there a bunch of drawers open in the house? And is it a little messy? No. No? Except maybe her bed where I... I emptied her purse, but other than that, no, everything was left as it was. As it was? Okay. Um, okay. So, how... I know you wanted to go to the States. What do you think was going to happen when people came looking for your parents? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. We're just hoping to get as far away as, as, as I could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am going to uh, just leave the room. I'm just going to go and check with my partner um, to see if I've forgotten anything. Is there anything else that you want to tell me? I don't know. No, but is there anything else about this that you wanted to tell me that, uh, no? Not that I can no. think of. Now, the clothes that your parents were wearing at the time of yeah. this, um, 
Where are these clothes now? Still on them. Still on them. Okay. Yeah, I didn't like take off the clothes. Okay. All right. Okay, that's good. Um, I guess this is one thing I'm just trying to understand. So you're cutting melons. And what was your mom doing? She was like. Uh, doing something, some kind of herb thing. I don't know what it was. It was just, she was grinding herbs or something. Okay. And how was that morning? This was around 11 o'clock. So what was going on that morning in the house? I don't know. I mean, like, what was... Did you have an argument with the parents or... Well, I mean, the whole upstanding, or not upstanding, the whole, the whole... Like disagreeing, disagreement about school and work and all that was just hanging over me. And I mean, I guess, like I mean, we've had arguments before, okay, and heated, yelling ones. And I guess just at that time when the cloud broke, I was chopping a melon. Okay, and what were you arguing about that day? Like while you were chopping the melon? I, I don't know if I was arguing. At that time, I was not arguing. Okay. All right. No, no. Okay. But I, maybe like a day or two before, we had been arguing. Okay. And it went about this, those, those issues. Okay. And anything in particular? So you're talking about school, about the work, work issue. And what was your mom like when she argued with you about it? Well, I, I didn't have a say. And so you're you're chopping the melon, and is that the knife that was used? I think so. Okay. I think so. All right. And where did you stab her on her? Um, in the back. In the back. Okay. And how many times? I don't remember. You don't remember. Okay. And what? How did she react when she was stabbed the first time? Actually, wait. Uh, I didn't stab her first. I used a stick first. You used a stick? Okay. Yeah. And where did you get the stick? I made it. Oh, okay. When did you make it? Um, a while back. Okay. And when you say made it, how would you, how do you make I, a stick? I carved it. Oh, cool. Okay. And for what purpose? Just to do. Okay. I had a lot of time on my hands in the summer. Okay. And what did you, were you going to use that stick for? I don't know. There was no plan when, when, when I made it. Okay. Okay. And uh, where were you keeping that stick? In the garage. In the garage. Okay. So how does it end up being in the kitchen that day? I don't know. I was planning. Like, I mean, during those 15 minutes of, 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 of going back and forth, one of those times I, I thought of using the stick. Okay. On? My mom. Okay. To do what? I don't know. Okay. Do, do I really have to say it? No, I'm just, I'm just trying to understand it. I'm just, I was a little confused as to how the stick was um, in the kitchen, but I understand. So it was in the garage because you were kind of thinking you were back and forth. All right. Okay. So use the stick. All right. Okay. Um, and uh, what about on your dad? What was used for him? A knife. The knife? Yeah. Okay. All right. There are two knives, right? Mm -hmm. You said? Right. Okay. And the smaller one you said... Cameron gets agitated at the fact that he might have to say what he's done to his parents. And the detective assures him he does not, and she was just confused. She does not want him to stop talking, nor does she want to break the trust that she's built, considering that she still has to go make sure she's asked everything that she needs. It's a very noisy building. Noisy, noisy building. Um, just, a, just a few little points. I know that, that the week um, after it happened, you said you stayed at your house. Okay. And where, you, st you stayed in your room, you told me. How were you, like, were you eating? Okay. And where did you go to eat? I ate in my room, but I had to go downstairs to get the food. Oh, okay. Did you go out at all? No. Okay. Did you make any uh, phone calls or watching TV? No? No? Okay. And where were you sleeping? In my room. You were, sleep you were able to sleep? Yeah. Okay. The detective asked if Cameron has been able to eat and sleep. These questions are important because they are able to show remorse. 
If you're able to eat and sleep, then you're probably not remorseful. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's what I thought you said. I just wasn't sure about that. Um, in the past, when you've had arguments with your parents, how did that end, those arguments? Like, how would you deal with it? I would watch, like, shows and stuff. Okay. Well, right. I guess that's, that's the answer. Okay. And, um... Like, I wouldn't win. Okay. Okay. The, the, the argument. Okay. All right. And how'd that make you feel? No, no. Like, not good. Probably, yeah. Okay. Um, did you ever have any, um, did you ever assault them in the past? Out of fear or, uh, not out of fear, but out of anger? No? Okay. All right. And we're just about done. Um, the, 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 the stick you told me is in, it's, where is the stick right now? I know it's broken. It, it, it I, I put, I, I got a, I th I'm pretty sure I got all the pieces and I put it in the bag with the two knives and I put that bag in the black recycling bin. Oh, in it's the garage. The, oh, it's a black recycling bin. Okay. Yeah. Now, when has the, uh, where's that black box now? In the garage. And has the recycling been picked up? No, no, I would have had to put that outside. And did you? No. No? Okay, so it's still there. Yeah. Okay. She eases Cameron by saying they're almost done and she only needs a little bit more information. This keeps Cameron talking because he wants the interview to end, so he's willing to tell her as much as he can in order to get it to end. She uses this to get him to tell her the location of the murder weapons so officers can go and retrieve it and use it as evidence in the trial. Can you describe the knives to me? Well, one has a green handle, mm -hmm. and one has a black handle. Okay, which is the longer one? The black one. The black one. Okay, and how long is the blade? Well, it's like those, like, ones that you use for cooking and, like, cutting. Okay. Sort of long and, like, yeah. a, like it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a, a kitchen knife. Okay, how long is the blade, would you say? Like... Okay. Like that, I think. Okay, so you're demonstrating it looks like that's about 8 inches there, if I'm right. And right. what about the shorter one? Like, like that. Okay, so maybe like about 4 inches or something. Okay, alright. And, um... I know you, you spoke about, um, that you're in school. How much schooling did you have before that? Like, did you, did you go to high school before? And did you graduate? Okay, where did you graduate? Brookfield High School. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, good for you. Oh, good. So you got your high school diploma? Oh, good. And then where did you go after high school? Straight to college. Okay. And how were you doing in school, in high school? Well. You were doing well? Yeah. What yeah. type of marks were you getting? Um, higher. Like, not A's, but, well, some, some were A's, but... In, in the bees. Okay. Oh, good for you. Good. Were you in the regular program? Like, when you say that... Like, just a regular, like, was it a, in a special needs class? I or? was part of the special needs, um, okay. but um, I didn't like it, so I went to the, the, the like, the normal ones. Oh, okay. All right. And what was the special needs? Why were you in the special needs because class? Because I have uh, slight autism. Okay. Right. And how does that affect you? Well, when I'm not on the meds, I have bad coordination. But when I am on the meds, I don't have bad coordination. Okay. All right. And how do you react when you're not on the meds? I know you've got the bad coordination. Anything else? No. Okay. And how does your um, mind feel when you're not on the meds? Fine. And when you're on the meds? Fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, anything else? Diagnosed with anything else? Uh, well, I have sleep apnea. Oh, okay. But that's not really that bad. Right. And um, how bad is it? When you, you said it's not bad, but how bad is it? Like I just sleep? maybe snore a oh, little snore? bit. Maybe. Okay. I don't know, since I don't really... Okay. All right. Do you sleep, are, you, are you a good sleeper? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. That's good. Have you been diagnosed with anything else, whether it be uh, your mental well-being? Nothing, no. Physically, anything? So physically your health is good? 
Okay. And when did you last take, did you take your meds last week for your, uh, um, yeah. Uh, autism? Yeah, right. And do you take it regularly? I, I, I normally do. Okay. Now, when you say normally, when do you not take it? Like right now. Oh, right now. Okay. S you know, since I don't have any stuff. You don't, eh? No. Okay. All right. Um, when was the last time you missed it other than right now? Um, maybe during the summer for a, okay. a, a couple of days. A couple of days. All right. Okay. Okay, um, um okay, all right. Now, your dad, where did, you told me you used the bigger knife on him, right? Yes. Okay, where on his body did you stab him? Uh, the back. In the back? All right, okay. How many times? I don't remember. Okay, that's that's right. I, you told me that. And just one, um, I think one more question. I think then I'm done. Um, what time of the day did you bring them outside? It wasn't at night. I know that I wanted to do it at night, but I, I didn't do it at night. It was sometime during the day. Okay, so... It was in the backyard, so... Uh, so yeah, that was my next question. How did you get them... Like, where's the kitchen? Is it in the front of the house or the back of the house? Kitchen is like in, in the sort of front area, but um, we have a, a back door that um, leads to okay. a deck that leads to the backyard. Okay. So then you drag you, your mom, you said you dragged her on the tarp? Yes. Did you, where did you, when, where, where in the house or outside did you first put her on the tarp? I put her on the tarp in the kitchen. Oh, in the kitchen. I brought I the tarp in and gotcha. then I... Yeah. Okay, and where was the tarp? It was outside. Like, I mean, it was like okay. we have a garden, so we have tarps. Oh, I see. Okay, so all right. So I just took a tarp. Okay. And, um, all right. And I, do you have any, like, neighbors on either side? Yeah, well, one of them is, like, never really there, and the other one is also, yeah, like, I mean, Guess they're not. Well, I mean, it's not. It's not like one is really never really there. Another one is like it's there sometimes and not there other times. Okay. Were you worried about them seeing you? Yeah. Okay. All right. And um, and your dad. How yeah. did you? It was the suitcase. Okay. Like, it was them, like par partially in a suitcase. It wasn't like completely. It was like sticking out. Yeah. It was hard. Okay, all right. And why did you put him in the suitcase? I didn't want to drag him. Okay, all right. Okay, um. And what were you, what were you thinking when you were doing this to them? No, like, like, when I was moving them? No, when you were actually stabbing them and hitting them. I wasn't, I don't remember exactly what I was thinking, but I don't think I was thinking anything. Maybe it was just adre adrenaline or something. Okay. Or just But were you feeling um, angry? Were you feeling... I don't think I was feeling angry. Maybe, no, actually. I don't think I was feeling actually any anger. Yeah. Okay. Which sounds actually really bad. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, like, like, and I think that's that. That's what I was saying. That like, it took me like fifty minutes of going back and forth of thinking to do it, and then not thinking I shouldn't do it, and you know, then I, f I finally did it. But it was, it was like, I don't know how to explain it. It was, mm -hmm. it was, it was mm -hmm. I didn't. I wasn't like out of anger. Like I don't think. So I, mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It was like, like, I, I think, like, it's not that I wasn't doing it for anger, but at the moment when I, when I did it, I wasn't feeling really angry. Okay. Be, um, maybe it was just the fact that it took me like fifth, maybe at the beginning I was angry, but then t doing the fifth, the 50 minutes of about to do it and then not doing it. And then, like, I mean, like when I say not doing it, I mean like chickening out, mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. 
Right, no, I understand. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay, I'm just going to make one quick, um, just speak to my partner, and I think then we're just about done. Okay, I won't be too long. Mm -hmm. You still have your water there? Yeah. Okay, I won't be long. One quick, one, one question, and then we're done. Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to understand is, I know there was no real argument that day. It was a cumulative effect, right, of the, the stress that you were going on with regards to work and uh, you're nodding, a uh, school and, you know, having to do chores around the house. This is the fourth time the detective has asked him this question. She's trying to determine a motive, but Cameron doesn't seem to understand what she's asking or how to answer it. So why why did that why did that happen on the sunday then like what is it that said i don't know why it happened on the sunday i i don't know like i don't know how to, I, don't, I don't i just don't know it just that just it happened on that day maybe it was impulsive or something or it just i i don't know okay well i know if it was impulsive because you've been thinking on and yeah, off right for yeah, 50 yeah, minutes so point. yeah it was impulsive when he states it might have been impulsive, she immediately shuts this down, stating how he told her he contemplated for 50 minutes beforehand. He then agrees with her that it was not impulsive. As the detective stated in the beginning, they are going for first-degree murder charges, and this means she has to show he was planning it ahead of time. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. All right. And you don't recall the last argument you had with them? No. All right. Okay. I also have a bad memory, but anyway. Well, yeah, okay, you seem to have provided pretty good memories with everything oh, that, with okay. regards to what happened, so uh, mm. I think I've, I have a good understanding. Cameron then tries to say he has a bad memory. When she asks him a question, he doesn't seem to want to answer. The detective shuts this down by saying he has remembered a lot of details already, and she doesn't think it's the case that he has a bad memory. This is to get him to feel that his lie isn't being believed, and he should just answer. Um... At the beginning, I told you that, um, remember I explained the room was being recorded and that you didn't have to talk to me unless yeah. you wanted to, yeah. and um, you chose to explain to me what happened. Well, I feel that I should be in trouble because I did something bad. Pardon? I feel that I should be in trouble because I did something bad. Well, you're under arrest yeah. and you're going to be charged. Yeah, I know. Okay, but I guess my my question that that you understood that at the beginning, mm -hmm. I mean, you knew why you were here. Yeah. Um, my question to you is that at the beginning I told you that you didn't have to talk to me and and you did. Yeah. I just was like, supposed to. Well, that's okay. But yeah. why why is it then that you decided to talk to me? Because I I I would did something bad and I want to you know be honest about it mm -hmm. and you know I feel that I should you know get in you know in trouble you yeah. know more like finish this oh, trouble. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. You know, like. I see. Okay. And how do you feel now that you've come out and told us about it? Well, I feel slightly better, but I mean it's not over yet. No, it's not. No. Okay. All right. And do you feel that did I threaten you at all? Mm -hmm. No, and did I? I didn't make you any promises, or no. no. All right. Okay. I just wanted just to make sure that we we understood that. And um, you know, it's it's. Um, I know it wasn't easy. You know, telling me the truth. I want to thank you for for telling me and explaining this to me. Um, yeah. I just. Uh, I think we have a pretty good understanding of what's transpired now. So what's going to happen now is um, you're going to have to remain here in Montreal. In Ottawa, they have to get a warrant to get you back to Ottawa. So once they obtain that warrant, um, some patrol officers are going to come from Ottawa and pick you up and transport you back to Ottawa. And then you will go before, uh, you'll have to, you'll call uh, an Ottawa lawyer if you want to, I'm assuming mm -hmm. you, you should. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you'll go before a judge and mm -hmm. uh, be held in custody yeah. um, until, you know, your lawyers decide what they want to do, if they want to seek bail or if they're, you're going to be held in custody until it gets resolved. I don't know. That's not that's nothing I can't tell yeah. you what's going to happen. It'll be yeah. up to between you and your lawyer. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, when I call the lawyer, uh, is there a phone number? 
Yes, so when you get to the Ottawa Police, first of all, I forgot one step. In Montreal, they're going to get you before a judge. They have to get you before a judge. Okay, then you're probably going to, I think you're going to come back here. I don't know. You'll go somewhere. So when you go to Ottawa, so what was your question? If we were going to give you a phone number, there's going to be a list of lawyers oh. uh -huh. available, and then you can pick a lawyer to to seek legal advice. It doesn't have to be the lawyer that's going to represent you, oh. but the once you get to Ottawa, the Ottawa officers are going to explain that process to you. Okay? okay? Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Um, nothing that relates to this. Okay, is there anything else that you Can want I to ask? Can I have some toilet paper, please? I am going to go and ask them Thank you. that, if you can have some. Thank you. All right. All right, so I am just going to leave the room just to get an officer. The tape is still running up until um, you leave the room. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go get the officer, and I will also ask him at the same time if Thank I can you. get you some toilet paper. Thank you. Okay, it won't be long. Thanks. It's, um, I've spoken to the officer, they're going to give you some toilet paper, mm -hmm. okay, Thank and um, yeah, that's no problem. I think, I don't think it was, it wasn't done on purpose, I think you just happened to end up in a cell without toilet paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the officer is going to get you some, and it's 7.38, and the tape is going to be turned off, so we're going to bring you out back to the cells, okay? Thank you. And you've got your water? Yes, yes it's got that, can I so no? Um, I'll give you a glass. In 2018, 24-year-old Cameron Rogers pled guilty to two counts of murder in the second degree. This was after his first trial led to a mistrial after he stated and then recanted that his father had abused him sexually. This ended up tainting the jury. He said he made this detail up and he's sorry about it. He was sentenced to 20 years. Like and subscribe for more interrogation breakdowns and true crime videos to come.